I've, I've talked to people that said they have seen it like that. And they said, well, it's very, very unusual. The sea is usually, there's waves and the wind is blowing and so on, you know. And under normal circumstances, that's not too bad. But when you get waves that are six metres high and you're in a little boat, I'm telling you, that's time to head for home. You see? So the ocean, the sea, becomes the picture of humanity because there's always something going on, something going wrong, maybe a little bit going right. There's always waves. There's always a, a kind of a storm out there somewhere. But this man, when he walked through that door, he saw a sea, but it was glass like crystal, clear, and absolutely flat. This is in that other world. This is humanity in God's world. It's a sea of glass. How do you make glass? Well, I'll tell you. It's made from sand. And you put the sand in a furnace. The sand actually melts. And then, with certain other issues that we're not going to worry about, but it forms into glass. And then you, you, you just put it into a mold. You can make your bottles. You can make glass for drinking out of, you can make whatever. But here, this is the picture of humanity through that door. Humanity, it's glass. It's absolutely smooth. And you can see through it. Oh Lord, what does this mean? Well, you see, humanity on the other side of the door has been through the fire of God. It's been through the fire of God. Each one of you are like a grain of sand. But when we go through that fire of God, and that fire of God, listen, I'm not talking about hell. I don't believe in any hell out there. There's no hell out there. Come on. I'm talking about the fire of God which purifies us. Yes. That's all. Yes. It's like when you heat gold. You don't heat gold to destroy it. You heat gold to purify yeah. it. Yeah. And the sludge comes to the top and you wipe it off, take it off. Then you've got the pure thing, you see. That's the fire of God. The fire of God never was instruct destructive. Never. All it will burn is what is of no value to you okay. nor to God. So you see, you can embrace the fire of God. Yes. It's not destructive. God never uses fire to get rid of anybody. Yes, Come on. Right, right. <laughs> Why does he want to get rid of anybody? Oh, every one of you here are his children. Right. You ever seen a father that doesn't love his children? Come on. Right. And I didn't run around there and ask you, did you give your heart to Jesus? Did you give your heart? I don't care whether you gave your heart to Jesus or not. That's not even in the Bible. All I know is that you are a child of God. That's what I know. Amen. And I know that God's open for every one of you today. If you want to, you can walk through this door into another world, which yes. is God's world. Amen. And I want to tell you, humanity in that world is a sea of glass. Yes. Every one of you are a grain of sand. Yes. And when you look into that sheet of glass that's like crystal, which is the picture of the humanity, could you pick out that little grain of, of sand that's in there that's you? No. Why? Because all of those grains have melded yes. together. Yes. And we have become one. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. You see? But that's what we were in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We were one in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And nothing has changed. <laughs> except in here. And then we see ourselves as an individual 
and I don't like him because I don't know. Well, he doesn't talk right, or he he does some crazy stuff, you know. So I don't like him. You see, in that other world, the humanity has become a sea of glass, yes. clear as crystal. Yes, crystal yes. And you can't find your grain of sand in there. Oh, yeah. We become one. Yes. Do you know that's the one thing that God wants? In, in that um, book of Acts, chapter 17, what does he say? The Apostle Paul says, he says, your world, he said, everybody in that world has come from one Father. Yes. Did you realize that? I don't care whether your face is black or brown or gray or pink spots. It doesn't make any difference at all. Because God did not create your body. You hear this? God created you and you are spirit. That's what you are. But you live in a body. But the body is not you. Your body was given to you by God because he put it together in your mother's womb yes. because he needed that body. Mm -hmm. yes. And all God asks of you is not to give your heart to Jesus but to give your body to him yes. Yes. so that he can do yes. what he wants to do Amen. on this earth. Yes. See, when the king was coming... God was looking for a voice. Who's got a voice that'll give me? Who, who will lend me their voice? Because the king is coming. That was Jesus Christ. So you go right back to Isaiah chapter 40, and the Lord's looking, somebody, somebody give me your voice. And John the Baptist said, you're going to have mine. And so what did John the Baptist do? He said, prepare you the way, the king's coming, come on, get ready, get the road straight, clean up your life, the king's coming. That was God's voice through John the Baptist. Yes. You see? And John the Baptist must have got a real kick out of that. I mean, to become, to become the vessel through which God does what he wants to do on this earth. Oh, Lord. And anybody, anybody. I mean, God created you as spirit, and that spirit can do anything God wants to do. So that this body just becomes the body. That's all. I've seen all the miracles of Jesus in my ministry, but I did not do one of them. Why? Because he never asked me to do a miracle. <laughs> 